Yeah, so Intel Innovation, uh, we spent uh, about a day and a half there uh, meeting with executives, going to keynotes, and of course, uh, knocking out seven uh, on, on-site videos. So uh, I always like a combination of thought leadership and, and product launches. And having run thought leadership uh, at, at a certain chip company, I can appreciate uh, good stuff and, and stuff that's not good. And I really appreciated that uh, CEO Pat Gelsinger started off with this notion of the, the SIL economy, right? Defined as uh, an evolving economy enabled by the magic of silicon, where semis are essential to maintaining and enabling modern economies. And, you know, it's funny, uh, uh, he could have done this two years ago, right, when we were, you know, not shipping $100,000 cars because of a five cent chip. Uh, But right now, front and center with the lack of uh, ability for NVIDIA uh, to be able to ship uh, uh, silicon. But his macro point was how it makes economies and it, it, uh, it builds uh, culture in a way that oil uh, used to uh, before. So I really like that. Some of the biggest announcements, uh, an Intel developer cloud, um, uh, essentially, you know, the unique part of this is whether it's CPU, GPU, uh, NPU, uh, or even an FPGA uh, using a similar uh, set of APIs and developer tools to, to do what you want, and that's to uh, accelerate. Uh, to my surprise, it's not just for developer, but you can actually run. In fact, we interviewed two customers that were running production workloads uh, on that. Uh, Pat also coined uh, the term AIPC. Uh, at the event, he did allude to it in his previous uh, uh, earnings, uh, but uh, he showed not only uh, benchmarks uh, with the what he called the VPU, which is a discrete solution, uh, but he also uh, gave a flash to the next generation, actually two generations of of silicon, where he was running uh, stable diffusion, uh, uh, music uh, uh, music generation. So. This is going to heat up, right? With Qualcomm leaning into this and and Intel leaning into this and AMD leaning into this, I think in Microsoft, as we saw, uh, something big could happen, and this could mean a a rebirth or another a mega cycle in uh, PC upgrades. Uh, I'll leave leave you some oxygen here. Uh, final thing that came on my radar is. Uh, Intel's uh, fifth generation uh, Sierra Forest demo, uh, which comes out in 2024. They had originally said it was 144 core solution in one part. It's actually 288. Uh, that, that's the old Intel that, that I know and didn't always love, right, when I was competing with them or, or even their customer. But that's a classic Intel move. Uh, Look, so- it's twins. No, exactly, exactly. And, you know, what's the one thing that uh, Intel CEO Pat G brought on uh, the 6.5 was that he loved, he loved that. Uh, a- absolutely. How about the glass substrate? That was pretty fun. I was going to leave that for you, uh, but uh, I'll follow up with, I do have to do research on this 288 core uh, deal. Um, I need to know the power. I need to know the bandwidth. Uh, you have to, if you can't feed the cores with the memory, it's not necessarily going to be doing uh, what you want to do. And wow, it does include hyper-threading too. So 288 uh, cores, 576 threads. I think most of the cloud folks will turn uh, hyper-threading off for, uh, for QoS, but it's there if you're looking for a, a beast. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to take a little bit of a different lens here. The innovation event is a developer event. And it's focused on making that connection. Now, if you're following the AI era, what you realize is Pat and I love to say, you can't, uh, you know, silicon or semiconductors will eat the world or rule the world or whichever way we want to say it. And that's because you can't run software on air. The reason developers show up at silicon events is because they understand they can't actually develop software if they don't have the memory, the cores, thread, all the things that Pat loves loves to talk about. I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, Pat G and Pat M, actually, you both big P and little P. You both love talking about this stuff. And and, and my point is, is, you know, you kind of go, why are developers at a, at a silicon conference? Well, same thing with NVIDIA. You know, NVIDIA has been able to change the sort of uh, 
perception of the company by saying, we're not a silicon company, we're a software company. And in many ways, uh, Intel is very, very actively trying to change that same perception. You know, whether that's its developer cloud, um, you know, where it's been partnering. And Pat, we talked to some really interesting companies that are building and developing with Intel, uh, next generation AI focused apps. Um, and Intel's been able to really, you know, start to, to talk about, you know, with its, you know, its strategy around one API, open Vino, it's building software tools that are going to, as this AI era proliferates, give flexibility and optionality to the developer community. And this is something that, you know, has been heavily debated. The reason the market doesn't believe companies like AMD and Intel will make a dent in the AI world is that everyone kind of always talks about something called CUDA lock it. Um, it's the, you know, the NVIDIA proprietary software ecosystem that people are developing for AI. But the truth is, is we're starting to see companies, you know, companies going on stage, the Fabletics and other companies that are basically committing long term to building on, on uh, Intel Silicon. The other thing, too, is, is that we are seeing this kind of shift where people, I think, are starting to see that when all this training bonanza comes to a, the foregone conclusion, and it will happen. I don't know if it's four, six, eight quarters into the future, but I promise you this unbelievable growth rate um, on these high-end GPUs will slow at some point when you know all these large hyperscale scalers have deployed their required infrastructure to train their large and, and, and mid-sized models. It's not going to end. It's just this, it's going to slow. And then what ends up happening though is a lot of this compute shifts to these other architectures that Pat Gelsinger talked a lot about here. You know, Intel is you know, not yet able to compete at the high end of discrete GPU with with uh, with what NVIDIA is doing, but with its A6, with Gaudi 2, um, with, you know, some of its its Xeon core processing for inference on database and, and whatnot, which is something they've talked about for a long time. A lot of the inferencing is what's going to come out of all this training. So all these apps that we want to run on the edge or these AI PCs, um, it's going to be NPU driven. It's going to be core CPU driven. It's going to be, you know, for data center applications, it's going to be driven by traditional core uh, Xeon. Uh, and, and Intel has a big role to play there. And so you kind of see the cycling of the everything runs on silicon and the developers want to build apps that are going to be usable. And you start to see where their role is to play. Now, again, this doesn't mean they're going to grab massive market share in the big data center GPUs the minute they roll one out. But what it means is they're trying to make software easier. They're trying to give developers a playground with their cloud developer, um, you know, uh, ecosystem, and they're trying to drive more de <clears throat> more development on Intel Silicon, which in the end is going to require more utilization and purchasing of Silicon, which is a long game. But Intel did show to me, Pat, that they're very much in the AI game. They have a story that's continuing to proliferate. Their five and four, you know, is very much close to being in line which is something you and i both said adamantly is going to have to happen and so it was a it was a strong overall showing um from the company you know the next few quarters there's a lot of work to be done um and that continued ability to meet the expectations um but the fact that developers are there developers are hungry to build ai on intel is a good sign for intel's longer uh, road ahead